Hello Info Person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to the mysterious dark matter, and more specifically, a potentially really good explanation for why in the last few years the scientists have been finding certain galaxies that don't seem to have any dark matter, with the explanation providing evidence for how those galaxies are made. But in this case, we are obviously working off the assumption that dark matter itself, the phenomenon that we refer to as dark matter, seems to be some sort of a particle or some sort of actual matter, not a phenomenon caused in our misunderstanding of the gravity or the phenomenon that can be explained by modifying certain formula. Which is of course not something that has been proven yet. As a matter of fact, this is one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. The effects of dark matter are visible everywhere, even in certain really massive galactic clusters like the famous Coma Cluster, but what causes it is not known. So anyway, in this case I wanted to actually start the story with the mystery itself, and this only started back in 2018. It started with this unusual galaxy that you can barely see in this image from NASA. It's known as NGC 1052 DF2, and we've discussed this galaxy many times before. But it also seems to have a relatively close neighbor that also seems to look very similar to the galaxy. That particular galaxy is known as Dash DF4. And to everyone's surprise, when the scientists originally found these galaxies, unlike your typical diffuse galaxy or a typical dwarf galaxy, these two galaxies seem to possess practically no dark matter whatsoever. Now, how do we know this? And that's actually important to understand. The way that the scientists study this today is by looking at the motion of various objects in a galaxy, something that's often referred to as the galactic rotation curves. Now, in a galaxy that possesses dark matter, we usually see something that you see on the right side. All of the stars here generally have the same velocity, even though logically you would expect the stars on the outskirts to move a little bit slower just like planets do in our solar system. This doesn't happen, they move pretty fast. But with these two diffuse galaxies, when the scientists looked at them, they realized that the stars in those galaxies were doing something different, they were doing something that's similar to the left side. Moving way way slower than they should, suggesting that the total mass of the galaxy was extremely low, way lower than it should be if it does have any dark matter in it whatsoever. And by the way, here they're not actually measuring stars, they actually measure the velocity of so-called globular clusters. So basically objects like this that you see right here next to our own galaxy, and these are because they are so bright, are extremely easily visible even from far away. And so several different explanations were given for this, and many explanations kind of at first made sense. But one of the more recent explanations involved the idea of nearby large galaxy known as NGS 1052, with the galaxy somehow responsible for the absence of dark matter inside these two. Then, just a few months ago, the scientists started to discover even more galaxies that don't seem to possess any dark matter. With the most recent discovery being the galaxy you see right here, known as AGC 114905. It doesn't actually look that green, this is just a representation of hydrogen gas in this galaxy, whereas the stars appear in blue, but once again, no dark matter present in this galaxy either, and there were actually six more galaxies discovered not so long ago. And so all of these galaxies together now sort of present a mystery. What exactly is happening here? Specifically because when it comes to these small diffuse galaxies, the original proposition has always been that they should be actually more enriched in dark matter. As a matter of fact, by mass, they should actually have way more dark matter than we see in these galaxies, which is normally the case with most diffuse and dwarf galaxies, just not these ones. And so some of the initial explanations were basically in regards to Okay, maybe we just miscalculated, maybe the distance here is wrong, maybe the actual velocity is wrong, or maybe the observations themselves are just wrong. And so many scientists try to confirm this, and every study so far has confirmed the original observations. These galaxies seem to be exactly where the original paper suggested they are, and everything seems to be as originally suggested. And this implied that maybe our understanding of how the universe itself works were just incorrect. Maybe dark matter is not exactly what we think, or maybe something here is just completely broken in terms of our physics. But obviously nobody wanted that explanation. And so some of the recent studies decided to obviously explore this more, but this time using computer simulations. In this case, simulating the evolution of a small piece of the universe that was approximately 60 million light years across. 
but focusing on approximately 13.8 billion years of evolution, basically from the beginning of the Big Bang until now. There are quite a lot of these simulations that you can actually find for free on the web already, with the famous one known as the Illustris project. But when they started this project, they didn't really expect a lot of galactic collisions and a lot of other things that they eventually observed. And having run the simulations, the scientists found seven extremely intriguing galaxies that they gave relatively funky names. The names like Deer, Blue, Bird, Lone Hair, and the ones you see in this image right here. With my favorite being the Wild Potato. And to their surprise, all of these galaxies were devoid of dark matter just like the ones that were discovered in the last few years. But where did it go? Their simulation revealed that it was actually due to the galactic collisions with nearby galaxies that were at least 1000 times more massive, with the dark matter itself being stripped from those smaller galaxies through the interaction with these larger giants. Which, by the way, was the conclusion with the missing dark matter in these two galaxies. Here, the nearby galaxy known as NGC 1052 and possibly its partner 1054 might have actually stripped these galaxies with the dark matter disappearing somewhere in the middle. If you'd like to learn more, the video about this is somewhere right there or in the description below. And more interestingly, all of this only took a few passages close to a galaxy or a few near collisions. So basically all of this was extremely fast in terms of cosmological time. And it seems to be pretty common next to large galaxies, which also suggests that we should be finding more of these in the next few years. But more importantly, this does not require any modification to modern physics, to anything that we've seen so far, but also once again suggests that dark matter might actually be some sort of a particle after all. We just have no idea what kind of a particle and what to even look for. And that's essentially because the galaxies that were discovered in this study depended on the idea of dark matter in order to be created in the way that they were formed. With the next really important step being the idea of possibly finding a massive galaxy somewhere out there that's actually actively stripping dark matter away from a smaller partner. This would be a definitive proof of this particular proposition. And I guess the other proof here would be to see how many we can find in the next few years to see if the simulation created the correct number of these galaxies compared to how many we believe exist out there. Although here it's also important to take a look at some other studies that have presented some other evidence about potential changes to dark matter over the years. Here once again we're talking about cosmological years. And here it relates to at least one study that tried to see how the galaxies and dark matter in those galaxies changed in the last few billions of years. In this particular case, the scientists in the study compared the mass distribution of galaxies really far away, approximately 7 billion years old, to some of the younger galaxies closer to us. In this case, taking a look at nearly 300 different galaxies out there. And by looking at approximately 300 different galaxies out there, they did discover a somewhat unusual pattern that's somewhat difficult to explain. It looks like in the beginning, so approximately 6.5 billion years ago, the so-called dark matter halo used to be much more concentrated closer to the center of the galaxy. And so even though today we believe it might look something like this, in the past it might have been much more concentrated and in effect much smaller as well. But it also had a relatively large region where the density was more or less the same. But second of all created two different regions of density, with one being referred to as the core and one being the halo. And in this case the scientists imply one thing. They imply that it cannot be explained if dark matter did not interact with other particles. Which is basically the principles we believe today, where we think dark matter just doesn't interact with anything. In this case, the scientists imply that there has to have been some sort of an interaction with possibly protons, electrons, neutrons, to actually create what they're observing. Or at least there was in the past in order to create what we're seeing. And so here something might have changed over time and the dark matter might have evolved somehow. So basically yet another mystery to deal with for some of the future studies. And so here they believe that it's very likely that the dark matter was as we predicted in the beginning of the universe, but over time it started to interact with various particles and sort of spread across a larger area, forming the actual density we observe in the nearby galaxies. Once again suggesting that the distribution could be different depending on what part of the universe you're looking at. Or in other words, nobody knows. But that's the beauty of this. These are beautiful mysteries and hopefully they'll help us understand the universe a little bit better. 
And until we do, well, that's pretty much it. All of the studies in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.